Hello friends, in this video we will learn how to calculate factor of safety of a degrading system. In the last videos we discussed about safety margin and safety margin M is given in terms of capacity of system that is the resistance provided by the system and demand that is the load coming to the system. So M is equals to X minus Y where X is the capacity and Y is the demand and the capacity is often written in terms of R and demand is also written in terms of Q. So now using the concept of safety margin we can calculate property of failure of the system and property of failure PF is equals to phi of Z. In this case phi is related to a standard normal distribution function. Another way to assess the reliability of a system is reliability index and reliability index beta is equals to mu m divided by sigma m. Now property of failure and reliability index these two can be used to see uh, the performance of the system and that's why these two are related. So we can say quality of failure is equals to phi of beta where phi is a function that is related to a standard normal distribution. Now in this video we will see how to calculate factor of safety that is another important point for calculating the reliability or performance of the system. So factor of safety theta is given in terms of ratio. So if you see safety margin is given in terms of difference but factor of safety is given in terms of ratio that is x by y. Now x is a random variable and y is also a random variable. So one can expect that theta is also going to be a random variable. So theta is a random variable. Now in this equation x is the capacity and y is the demand. So we can find PDF of theta. So PDF of theta that is f theta of theta can be derived from the PDF of x and y. In other words, if I know PDF of demand and capacity, we can calculate PDF that is protein density function for factor of safety. So at this point, we have one question for what values of theta the failure will occur. So for a system to fail, my capacity x should be less than the demand. In other words, I can say the ratio x by y should be less than 1. That is basically a random variable theta. So if I have my theta which is less than 1, then we will have a system that is going to fail. So failure occurs when theta is less than 1. And we can also calculate quality of failure. So if I integrate from 0 to 1, then we can get the quality of failure. So if I know this PDF function for theta, I can integrate this with respect to theta and the limit will go from 0 to 1. So quality of failure is equals to f theta d theta and I have to integrate between 0 to 1. Now if you see this whole term is nothing but cumulative density function of theta evaluated at theta is equals to 1. So this is f theta and evaluated at theta is equals to 1. So this is a cumulative density function value in this case. We can also illustrate this using a graph. So let us consider this. In this case on the x-axis we have random variable theta and on the y-axis we have quality density function and this is the plot of f theta. So we are interested in the point that is we will have failure that is point that is less than theta is equals to 1. So basically this region is 
corresponding to failure probability free f. So we have to calculate this area and we can write this is nothing but f theta d theta and this will go from 0 to 1. Now one important point in this case that is the ratio x y y is not going to be negative and at max it is going to be 0 and that's why in this case we have limit 0 and 1 is the limit because we will have failure at theta is equals to 1. And this is nothing but CDF so we can write f theta evaluated at 1 and this is same written here. So we will illustrate calculation of factor of safety using an example. And this problem says let the structural strength and applied load R and Q on a structure is independent log normal variate with mean mu R and mu Q and a standard deviation sigma R and sigma Q respectively. So we have been given that a structural strength and applied load is log normally distributed and the mean is given and a standard deviation for both variables are given and we have to calculate the probability of failure. So probability density function of a log normally distributed random variable x can be given by this. Now if you see this expression there are two parameters one is lambda another is xi. And these two parameters can be calculated if I know the mean and a standard deviation of log normal variable. For example, we can calculate these two parameters for a strength and applied load. For a strength, we can write lambda r is equals to ln mu r minus xi r square divided by 2. Similarly, other parameters that is xi r square is equals to ln 1 plus sigma r square divided by mu r. So this means if I know my sigma r and mu r, I can calculate this xi r, basically xi r square and then I can take root and I can calculate xi r. And once I know my xi r value, I can plug it here and I know mu r value, then I can calculate lambda r. So this means for a log normally distributed random variable, if I know that is what is the mean and what is the standard deviation, I can calculate these two parameters. And this is same for load, we can calculate these two parameters, I have to use mean and a standard deviation that is given in this problem. So once I know these two parameters that is lambda and xi for these two random variables that is demand and capacity we can calculate factor of safety. So the factor of safety is given as the ratio that is r by q. One important point that is ratio r by q that is factor of safety is also a log normal variable and this can be explained as follows. So let us take log both side. So if I take log both side of this expression I will have ln theta which is equals to ln r by q and if I use the properties of log I can write this as ln r minus ln q. But we know that is r is a log normally distributed random variable. Similarly, q is also log normal random variable. So one important point we already know that if x is a log normal distribution, then ln x is a normal distribution. So if I use that property, then I can say this is nothing but a normal distribution. And similarly, ln r is also normally distributed. And the difference of these two will also be normally distributed. That is, ln theta is also normally distributed. So if ln theta is normally distributed, this means theta is log normally distributed. 
and the corresponding parameters lambda and j can be evaluated. So we can write lambda theta is equals to lambda r minus lambda q. So this should be q. And j theta square is equals to j r square plus j q square. So at this point, what we are using is we are using if x is log normally distributed then ln x is normally distributed with mean lambda and variance xi so we can calculate mean that is mean of this simply mean of this minus mean of this and variance is simply a square and these are independent random variables so covariance will be zero so we can calculate mean and variance and once I know mean and variance, I can calculate quality of failure. So we have to calculate this area which is quality of failure. Or we can say we have to calculate CDF of this function evaluated at 1. Now as I said earlier, if my theta is log normally distributed random variable then ln theta is normally distributed random variable so we can easily calculate this area and we can use the property of a standard normal distribution and we can calculate this area is nothing but phi of this function that is ln1 minus mean divided by a standard deviation so what we are doing is we are basically calculating phi of x minus mu by sigma in this case x is ln theta and we have to we have to plug the value of theta that is 1 so this is here and ln 1 is 0 so we can write this expression is simply phi of minus lambda theta divided by xi theta now if you remember the normal distribution area this total area is 1 so this area can also be written as 1 minus the plus quantity so here I have a plus quantity this time 1 minus phi of lambda theta divided by xi theta and now we have already calculated lambda theta and xi theta in the previous slide we can plug those value and we can calculate quality of failure. So if I plug lambda theta that is nothing but lambda r minus lambda q and xi theta is this value I can get the property of failure. So to summarize in this problem what we did we have been given demand and supply both are log normally distributed random variable and then we said if these two are log normally distributed then my factor of safety theta is also log normally distributed random variable now i know that if theta is log normally distributed random variable then log theta will be normally distributed random variable and then we have to calculate quality of failure using the concept of a standard normal distribution table for that purpose we have to calculate mean of that variable that is theta and variance of theta and we use the property that if I have difference of two random variables normally distributed random variable mean is equals to simply mu of 1 minus mu of 2 and the variance is a square of first variable plus a square of second variable and these two variables are independent so covariance term will be zero in this case. So in this video we have seen how to calculate factor of safety if demand and capacity is given. In the next video we will see how to calculate reliability using second moment method. Please feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.